This is the 2018 Ford Mustang. And what I want to find out is whether this is still the true American icon it was in the 1960s, or whether it's gone all soft and European. Now I'm going to be answering that question along with many others in this in-depth review. And for many more reviews like this, make sure you press the subscribe button. Before I answer that though, what makes this Mustang different from the one that launched in the UK in 2015? Well, there's a more aggressive looking bumper with a lower grille, there are slots in the bonnet, and LED headlights are standard, while at the back there's a different bumper and quad exhaust for the V8. It's a subtle change to a car that's never been about subtlety. Things you can't see are more safety kit, a more powerful V8, a good neighbour mode for the sports exhaust, tweaked suspension and a new 10-speed automatic gearbox. Inside, and there are fewer changes. There's a steering wheel that's now covered in softer, more premium feeling leather. But the two big changes that really are very welcome are the screens in front of you. Now, let's start off with the infotainment screen. Now, it uses Ford's latest SYNC 3 system. And much like the Fiesta and the Focus, it's a genuinely good system to use. It's not the best on the market, but it's absolutely fine. It's a lot better than the previous system used in the old Mustang. Mustang. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, and the functionality is absolutely fine. But the really big change, and something that looks really smart in this car, are the new TFT screens in front of you. Now, in the old Mustang, you had two big clocks, two retro looking clocks, but here it's a full width display. Now, if you go into normal, you get your two traditional looking clocks. Sport, you get a sort of a half and half hybrid sort of appearance. But my favourite is the track, the racetrack mode, because you get this horizontal rev counter that looks so 1960s. Now elsewhere, there aren't any changes whatsoever, so you still get this beautifully retro dashboard. I mean, it's a real highlight of the Ford Mustang. And you also get the same number of cubbies as you'd expect. So the door bin, the glove box, a surprisingly small glove box for an American car, and these cup holders here. Now, this is one thing I don't particularly like about the Ford Mustang, because in changing this from a left-hand drive to a right-hand drive car, Ford haven't changed the centre console. So the handbrake, it's lovely to have a manual handbrake, I have to admit, but it's positioned on the wrong side. And also these cup holders, the edge of them is right where you want to rest your arm. So you tend to, when you're driving along, you tend to put your arm there and it tends to fall into the cup holders, which can get a little bit annoying. And there's also a little cubby down here as well with a USB charging port as well. Elsewhere, well, Ford's say that they've improved the build quality in certain areas, but to be perfectly honest with you, I can't really work out where those areas are. It's still a medley of soft touch plastics and scratchy plastics. But for once on the car buyer video, I don't really care about the fact those soft touch plastics in here because if you want nice quality plastics, buy a German car. Now, in typical Ford Mustang style, there are a huge amount of options you can choose to make your perfect Ford Mustang. But one of my favourites are the Recaro Sport seats because they offer a huge amount of support. One downside to these seats, however, is when you get in the back. Because yes, there is a latch back here to fold the backrest down, but to get into the back, and because there's no memory setting on these seats, you have to slide it forwards yourself. So you press this button here and you wait and you wait, and you wait, and there we are. And once you've navigated your way around the seat belt, it's not a particularly elegant affair, I have to admit. And, and even though the Mustang is a big car, there's not a huge amount of space back here. Now, knee room for an adult is okay. Now, you can't see it, obviously, because I've got the seat uh, folded forwards, but I've tested this, trust me, knee room is okay. But that's not the problem back here. The problem, is headroom, because if I sit in my normal position, there we are, look at that. Isn't that brilliant? I don't think I could last longer than five minutes back here. And I'm only five foot 10 and a bit. There's really, it's very, very cramped back here. But having said all of that though, there are isofix points back here, which give a clue as to who should be sitting back here. One thing that is worth mentioning though is it's very easy to fold down the rear seats. There's a couple of tags. Pull the seat down and look at that. An almost flat loading area, which for a coupe is pretty good. Pretty surprising, actually. 
round of the boot and yeah, things are pretty good. You release the boot with a little button under here, which actually annoys me because especially in winter, this panel down here can get very dirty. It means your hands get very dirty, but like I say, I'm a bit of a tart, so it probably won't affect you. But once you've lifted up the tailgate, and yes, like I say, the boot is of a pretty good size. It's very wide, very flat, and you can fit a large amount of luggage in here. We can easily fit all of the car buyer suitcases in there. That's the big one. That's the middle sized one. And here is the small one. But you will have noticed when I was loading all that luggage, it is quite a high step up this boot. And thanks to these fabulous rear lights, the opening is actually pretty narrow. So it does mean when you're loading things in, it can be just a little bit harder than it should be. If you want something a little bit more practical, a more practical coupe, you're gonna have to look at something like an Audi TT, but come on. If you're interested in the Ford Mustang, practicality is probably the least of your worries. There are no trim levels on the Mustang, just a load of option packs, sat-nav, upgraded stereos and wheels, on top of the standard kit list of the touchscreen with Ford Sync 3, climate control, a parking camera, LED front and rear lights, parking sensors, leather seats and that TFT screen for the instruments. But if you're a real Mustang fan, you'll want the Bullet Special Edition with its dark Highland green paint, louder exhaust and an extra 14 brake horsepower from the 5.0-litre V8. Speaking of engines, there's still the choice of a 2.3-litre four-cylinder engine and that 5.0-litre V8. Now, there are a number of reasons why I think you should go for the 5-litre V8. Now, first and foremost, it's power, because for this new 2018 model, Ford has uprated the power by 38 bhp, so you now get 444 bhp. In the 2.3-litre four-cylinder EcoBoost, there's less power now. It's down by 27, so it's 286 bhp and I'm sorry but that's just not enough power for a car that's supposed to be a muscle car. The second reason is the noise. Now thanks to the new active sports exhaust system that all 2018 models get, this thing sounds better than it used to and by a long way because it's just allowed the 5 litre V8 to really sing. Just listen to this. It's so manly, so masculine, it sounds so angry, but also quite beautiful at the same time. It sounds absolutely fantastic and you just don't get that in any of the European rivals. This thing sounds so typically American. And finally, it comes down to authenticity because this is a Ford Mustang and it's built and designed to be powered by a V8 engine. Now, I know some of you are going to say the V8 is just too thirsty for me. The four-cylinder makes a lot more sense. But trust me, the V8 isn't that much worse at the fuel pumps than the four-cylinder because this, well... It's not very good, I have to admit. Overall, we've been getting around 22 to 23 MPG, but because the four cylinder seems to be bereft of grunt for most of the time, it isn't that much more fuel efficient. And come on, this is a Ford Mustang. If you're approaching this car with the mindset of it being cheap to run, you really shouldn't be considering a Ford Mustang. End of. And one of the other big changes to the 2018 Ford Mustang are the gearboxes. Now, if you want an automatic, Ford will sell you a 10-speeder. But I have to say, it is absolutely awful and is a real stain on the Ford Mustang's character. Yes, 10-speed. Sounds great, doesn't it? Sounds very macho, very manly, and you would think it would improve fuel economy. But the whole experience is awful. The whole thing is constantly hunting around for the right ratio. It never feels happy, never feels settled in the right gear. Your best option is to stick with the six-speed manual because it's just in perfect keeping with the whole car. Yes, the clutch pedal is very heavy. Yes, the gear lever feels very notchy, but the whole thing just feels in perfect keeping with the car. And there's nothing better than stoking up that 5-litre V8 with a traditional six-speed manual gearbox. 
other changes? Well, Ford have tried to improve the ride quality in this car, so they've tweaked the suspension. And yes, you can feel it. It feels a little bit more sophisticated. However, it still doesn't feel as good as something like an Audi S5 or a European car. It still doesn't feel particularly well connected. The front suspension and the back suspension don't tend to work particularly well together. The best way I can describe it is that it's like an old dog that's become immobile. It feels like the Mustang is dragging its rear wheels over bumps. It's better than it was before, but it's still some way off an Audi S5. But ultimately, if you've got your heart set on a Mustang, nothing from Europe will come close in terms of image, power and character. Thank the good Lord, the Mustang exists. If you like this, then watch our Audi A5 Coupe video, subscribe to the channel by pressing the car by logo and press the bell icon so you know when the next video from me and Ginny is published. Thanks for watching.